it. And let's talk about this wild card weekend, Larry, and how it might all shake out again. Welcome to Wake Up. Damon and Larry with you. It's great to have you here. Go ahead, hit like, hit subscribe, support both of these channels. Anyway, look, let's talk about this NFL playoff schedule. Uh, first round bye for the 49ers in the divisional game will either be on January 20th or 21st. We don't know who and we don't know when, but clear that weekend, January 20th or 21st is when the 49ers will be playing their divisional game. Wild card weekend gives us two games Saturday, three games Sunday, and a Monday night football game to wrap up the wild card week. It starts Saturday at 1.30 West Coast time with Browns at the Texans. The Texans are always in that early Saturday window, and they are once again but what an interesting year that they have have had. And, and I mean, they are really playing with an awful lot of they're, they're playing with more house money than anybody else in the in the damn tournament. I mean, they're not expected to do a thing. And here they are. Um, so congratulations to D'Amico Ryans. I, 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 I hope that he is the coach of the year. C.J. Stroud, to me, that guy should be the rookie of the year. Um, an incredible- he was great. He was great against the Colts, wasn't he? Yeah, an incredible season for the Houston Texans. And if you are a Texans fan, are you going to win the Super Bowl this year? No, you're not. Are you ahead of schedule? You're more ahead of schedule than any team in sports, to be completely honest with you. So you should feel very good about yourself if you're a fan of the Houston Texans. We'll get into like thumbnail sketches, Larry, of who these teams are. I'll get your elevator pitch on each and every team. Um but I, they were my sleeper team this year to take off. They won three games last year. They brought in the Niners' offensive system. They brought in the Niners' defensive coordinator. They had two picks in the top of the draft. They hit on both picks. Um, the Texans had done did a lot of nice things, and they're a, they're a team on the come. And, and they got a nice win against the Colts. I thought the Colts gagged it away, to be honest. But... Um, I think Cleveland gets him here, Damon. This is C.J. Stroud going up against the number one defense in the league and rookie quarterbacks in history going up against the number one defense in the league in the playoffs have never fared well. So I'm taking the Browns to beat the Texans on the road. The Browns are favored, by the way, by two and a half in that game, despite it being played in NRG. Well, look, I mean, the Texans, if we're being completely honest, they're the NFL's version of the Oklahoma City Thunder or the Arizona Diamondbacks, if you want to even sneak in a baseball reference to today's show for just old people to enjoy. Uh, but it really is. like this, this is a team that is so ahead of schedule. No one expected them to be here, um, and they are. So congratulations to them. The Browns, meanwhile, Larry, you're right. They're probably going to win that game. And there, what might happen is like as wide of a window as you can find. If you're telling me that the Browns actually – because the magic went out of Joe Flacco's bag of tricks and CJ Stroud and that young Texans team figured it out. Like, I believe you, I could, I could see them winning that game. It's not out of the realm of possibility in my mind. Um, Browns do turn it over. They throw a lot of picks, Larry, they could be a disaster or they could be Super Bowl champs. Like that's the window that the Browns are operating in right now. They could absolutely be one and done, or they could win the whole damn thing. Um, they're a really, really, really weird team, weird season, very good defense. The fact that they have shown up in the in the postseason, given who they've lost, um, you know, going back to Nick Chubb all the way in week two to Deshaun Watson, and they might be better off without Deshaun Watson. By the way, I was told oh, maybe. Yeah, no, well, I mean, here's the thing. I was told that the, a, there's a nickname that they use in Ohio for Deshaun Watson that I had never heard before it was referenced on my post game show last night. Larry, his nickname is Groper Cleveland. <laughs> Groper Cleveland is one well, of the. I mean it's the look at the Texans too. Nickname since Ron Mexico. It oh, really that is. is awesome. That is awesome. Groper and Cleveland. I mean, Irwin Kwong says the Texans, Texans are very lucky. They moved on from Deshaun Watson and they get C.J. Stroud. Imagine that. They had the dark cloud of, of Deshaun Watson's weirdness all hanging over him. They get out from underneath Watson. They wind up getting C.J. Stroud, who's such a great guy that the media there voted him like the 
most cooperative media guy. I mean, you can tell that kid is just really, really solid across the board. Did you ever talk, um, hear him talk about his father who's imprisoned? And I mean, no, no, I oh haven't. My God. So he grew up with his dad behind bars, like his entire life, basically. Wow. And, um, you know, that's he, overcoming odds, man. It's overcoming odds. And the way that he spoke about it was just with so much humanity and maturity and, um, and understanding also that criminals indeed need be punished, you know, but not forgotten. Like it was like the, the CJ Stroud's a real deal, man. I'm, I'm impressed well, so much for that H2 testing that he bombed. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that test is never going to be given again, or nobody's going to put any credence in that test going forward. This kid's amazing. And, and he, he had several, several incredible plays in that Colts uh, victory, victory over the Colts. And, and imagine what Houston would be if they hadn't lost tank Dell. I mean, they right. lost tank Dell, um, who's a terrific young receiver, um, but you know, Houston's coming. This is their year, but they're coming. Yeah. No, it's, you know, how do you do on the wonder lick? <laughs> wonder lick my balls. He's a player. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's who he is. He's good. Um, so that's a very interesting first game followed by dolphins and chiefs. Oh my God. What are the dolphins even doing in this game? Right? I mean, you want to talk about gagging away the end of your year. I mean, the Miami Dolphins. Well, not that, they lost Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips. They have no more teeth on their defensive ends. Their defense is not the same as it was. They went from um, possible two seed to on the road at Arrowhead. They went from home game to you're going to Arrowhead. That is a huge wrong direction for this team to be moving in. And they, they lose at home to a Bills team, Larry. And we'll get to the Bills and Steelers in a second. But, you know, the, the Dolphins have beat one team with a winning record all year. I know. Yet we also admit they're pretty good and dangerous, but they're not as good and dangerous as they used to be before the injuries started piling up. And it feels like this good feeling dolphin season will be coming to an end at Arrowhead. And let's be honest, the chiefs Patrick Mahomes has been playing opponents and his own wide receivers all season. Like he's playing against both of those units and the the Chiefs are if they beat the Dolphins, we're gonna find out if Patrick Mahomes can go on the road and win a playoff game on the road. He has been at Arrowhead for every playoff game of his young career, and he's been wildly successful. Now let's see if if he can take that out on the road if they do get past the Dolphins in, in wildcard week. Um I don't know who to pick here, by the way. I mean, Miami hasn't won a playoff game since 2000. They don't have any defensive ends. Um, their their fatal flaw, according to Bill Barnwell, is that their red zone defense is a joke. Mahomes is 9-2 and two at home in the postseason. They are going to have to go out on the road, but not for this game. And then Kansas City leads the NFL with 38 drops, 25 of the 38 from their wide receivers. So, I mean, they drop the ball like nobody else. They need a receiver in the worst way. Um, they don't score points at, at the near level that they were years ago, a couple of years ago or even a year ago. And um, But, Larry, it's the best. They're three-and-a-half-point favorites it's against a Miami defense. team. It's the best defense of their entire run. Entire run. Andy Reid, and no, if the Chiefs' offense were just average this year, they would have won three more games. Had they just Tyree had kills them. going back to uh, KC for the first time and ever since he left. So it's going to be a big day for him. I don't, you know, this game, I don't feel, I don't know who's going to win. I would lean to the chiefs because they're at arrowhead and Mahomes is so good at arrowhead and Miami looks like they're circling the drain, but you know what? All it's going to take is for Miami to put up 21 points and Kansas city's going to have a hard time matching that. Should be a fascinating game. Full layoff from a gambling standpoint, if you don't mind me saying that. That's I, I, there's there's a lot more I think easy pickings out there than that one. Um, so those are your Saturday games: Browns, Texans, Dolphins, Chiefs. Sunday of- at 10 a.m. We got uh, West Coast time. Bills and Steelers. Okay, so let's start with the Bills. Because the Bills were, no one's even thinking about them anymore, six and six going into December, and then they haven't lost a game since. 
And in all the games that they lost, they've never lost one game by more than six points all season. I saw somebody who's in the Bills Mafia or covers the team basically say, given everything I've seen about the Buffalo Bills, they're either in the Super Bowl or will suffer the single dumbest playoff loss in the history of the franchise that has redefined dumb playoff losses. So that's the window for the Buffalo Bills here. They're either going to heat it up and be in the Super Bowl or they're going to go out like goofy chumps with some ridiculous mistakes. So I don't really know what to think of the bills. Are they good? Yes. They're also team steps on their own dick. Maybe as much as any other football team out there that can claim to be a good football team at the same time. Meanwhile, the Steelers, what can you say other than Mike Tomlin is the single least appreciated great coach in the history of this league. Maybe every single team, good ones take on their team. They're, they're like their head coaches persona. The Steelers are very, very much like Mike Tomlin. They're sort of hidden in plain sight. They're pretty good. They've got their flaws. Uh, you, you don't want to mess with them at home. And that's what the Bills have to go do now. I, I think the Bills are going to win that game. They should win that game. They're um, going to win. TJ Watt just got hurt. And I don't know if he's going to be able to go. And if he doesn't go, that changes who the Steelers are, not only physically, but emotionally. He is their leader, their captain. Um, Bills are going to probably win that game, but tip of the cap to the Steelers who, you know, they, they still don't know what to do at quarterback and they're in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, the Steelers are going home. Um, TJ water, no TJ Watt. Now they got Nick Herbig, who's a really good player. Um, and they're really loaded at, at edge rusher. But, um, even though it's been an up and down year in Western New York, I mean, the, you know, the, the bills are Josh Allen is just too much. Um, you know, he, he, you know, only thing about Josh Allen though, he's played in eight playoff games in his career. He's only four and four. Um, and you know, but there was a possibility they weren't going to make the playoffs. They answered the bell in the second half against the dolphins last night. I wonder about Buffalo's defense a little bit on the back end and up front rushing the passer, but they did get Von Miller back and we'll see what he's at. You know, the, the one guy to be aware of for Buffalo that's really coming on is Buffalo's got some young weapons that are really improving. James Cook, James um, Cook. Khalil Shakir, the Boise State receiver. Um, it's not just Diggs. Dalton Kincaid is there. You know, he's got some weapons. Buffalo, Buffalo's got a really, I think, a really powerful offensive line. That Dawkins tackle is a monster. Josh Allen yesterday was 30 of 38 for 359. So Allen will throw picks. Buffalo's not perfect. But if you told me it's Buffalo and the Niners in Vegas, I would not be shocked. Sunday at 1.30 after Steelers and the Bills is put to bed, we got Packers and Dallas. You want two big brands in the NFC? You got them right there. Obviously, the Packers right now have come on late with three straight wins to qualify for the postseason. Jordan Love, if this is a guy who keeps receipts, there are a lot of people who owe him lunch or brunch or breakfast or dinner. Like, I mean, he has really turned into a guy that all of a sudden Green Bay is thinking we we legitimately have our third straight really good quarterback here. Now, is he going to be Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers? Only time will tell. But Jordan Love is, is no longer a project. That guy's a quarterback. He's pretty damn good. He had some unbelievable throws yesterday. And, and, you know, if you look at um, the way he's finished the year, he's got 15 to one touchdown to interception ratio coming home here. Uh, Dallas, though, is going to win this game. Dallas is unbeatable at home by a team like Green Bay. They haven't lost all year at home. They're the um, only unbeaten team anywhere in the NFL, home or road. They're the only 8-0 team anywhere. They're 8-0 at home. So uh, Cowboys, also, like you said, they don't, they don't lose at home. And look, let's be honest. Dak Prescott just had one of the least appreciated single greatest seasons in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, and also um, Jerry Jones is doing the smart thing, which he's holding Mike McCarthy's feet to the fire. He's like, you know what? I don't know if Mike McCarthy will be back. We'll, we'll see how we do in the playoffs. So, you know, McCarthy won one ring with Green Bay. Um, Dallas is not going to win the Super Bowl, but Dallas is going to win this game. I agree with you. 
Sunday night wraps up five o'clock with a game that will drip with probably more storylines and hype than any other game, given the fact that, hey, you know, the Rams quarterback is now the Detroit Lions quarterback. But more importantly than that, the Detroit Lions quarterback is the Rams quarterback and the rooting for Matthew Stafford that has followed him to Los Angeles ends when it is Matthew Stafford and the Rams coming in to spoil what is the first home playoff game for the lions larry in like 30 years they haven't had a home playoff game so it's uh can matthew stafford go in and break detroit's heart that's the storyline the way it's all set up i i think that the lions you know god bless them they're the fighting dan campbells they play you know punch you in the mouth football and they're also the most doubted 12-win playoff team we've seen in a really long time. Can an offensive line by itself with Jared Goff behind them win a Super Bowl? I don't know. I don't even know if they can beat the Rams, quite honest with you. So um, that that's a game that I, I, have, I have trouble handicapping it. The Rams certainly have come on late. This is one of McVay's finest seasons. Um, a quarterback with weapons can get really, really dangerous. We'll see. I, I really don't know how to even handicap that one. I'll I'm going. I'll, I'll give you a way to handicap that one. Take the over. Take the over. There's going to be lots of points in that game. I really believe. Um, Detroit. You know, Detroit's defense. They're 15th in the league in total defense. They're 23rd in the league in in points allowed. Their pass defense has been a problem. They're 25th in the league in yards per game uh, through the air. They did get C.J. Gardner Johnson back. But now Brian Branch, the rookie from Bama's hurt. Sam Laporta's knee bent in a really ugly direction yesterday. Yep. And the way he looked, I'm, I guarantee you that Sam Laporta is not playing tennis this morning. I mean, he he is, you know, he he, he I bet you he doesn't get out of bed until Wednesday. That's a um, extended knee. There's no way. If he plays in this game, he's a bad A. I will say this, though. Laporta is, people are like, well, he's like, you know, the next pretty good Iowa tight end, he might be the best of them. I mean, I love George Kittle as a blocker, but George Kittle ain't the receiver this kid is. Sam Laporta is a hell of a receiver. I think Zach Ertz may wind up signing today in Detroit. Um, but then, you know, the one thing about the about Goff, and the numbers showed it, Barnwell had it in his article this week, Jared Goff passer rating, when you look at him as far as his QBR, uh, with and without pressure, it goes from 66.8% without pressure to 24.7% with pressure. So all you got to really do is pressure golf. And I think you got a great chance to beat the lions, but man, um, Jameer Gibbs, Montgomery, Laporta, if he's healthy, um, I'm on Ross St. Brown got snubbed for the pro bowl, but he's legit. And he's they've got, got major shoulder. weapons and Chauncey Gardner Johnson back. I still think I would probably lean to the Rams um, in that game, but the place is going to be cr absolutely crackling with intensity. Um, Detroit has been waiting for this for decades, and I get a feeling that Detroit's going to beat the Rams, even though it's like the chic pick is Rams, and and I, I I've been saying the Rams are going to beat Detroit, and I and I but I the more I think about it, the more I think, you know what. Detroit's on a magic carpet ride and it's going to end, but they're going to, this is going to be their, this is going to be the one that brings them all back. You know, that, that 15 foot putt that you sink that brings you back in the golf course. This is going to be the, the, the win that they say, well, you know, we got that win in the playoffs over the Rams. This is going to make the winner end quicker in Detroit. I think Detroit gets this win. The more I think it doesn't about matter it. if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I will beat your ass. And it doesn't matter if it's it doesn't matter if the two point conversions at the seven yard line. I will go for it. Come on, Dees. Dees nuts. <laughs> Got to root for that guy. <laughs> you want to talk about a team that adopts a head coach personality? Get, I by love the way, that get, guy. Getting to Jared Goff is a lot easier to say than do. That offensive line probably is the best in football. So, um, you know, I agree. The, I agree. The offensive line is clearly regressed. And that brings us to our final game of wildcard weekend, Monday night. And how about this? 
things have gone so wrong for Philadelphia since we got to know Big Dom and the 49ers went in there and won that game. <laughs> Larry, there is talk of if Sirianni doesn't win in Tampa, he's out. He might be gone from a Super Bowl appearance to a presumptive one seed all year long to see the Niners basically change the arc of the Eagles season so dramatically that they've now, again, the Eagles are coming in, went from presumptive one seed to a one in five finish in their last six games. They haven't been right in a very, very long time. A late season collapse officially has Sirianni on the hot seat. If we know anything about Philadelphia is that town can put more bad negative juju in the air than, you know, any any city in America can put more negative vibes in the air when it comes to Philadelphia and its sports. Meanwhile, the Baker Mayfield Bucks. I mean, that's a really good football team that had Tom Brady still been their quarterback. They're getting a lot more buzz. This is their third year in the row winning that division. Now the division is full of hapless, uncompetitive franchises. When you got, you know, a bad Carolina team, Saints and Falcons are two, you know, stepping on their own dicks, first ballot Hall of Fame franchises right there. So in a very mediocre division, the Buccaneers found a way to rise above that mediocrity. Not greatly, but just enough to get a home playoff game. And, you know, what a what a year for Baker Mayfield when it's actually all said and done. I mean, that team, that that is a team that is playing with house money. And I think they're going to beat the Eagles, Larry. Dude, the Eagles suck right now. I mean, uh, Scott Van Pelt said it on Sports Center last night. What the hell did they do well at this point? Um, this you always here. I'm going to share the screen. Here's Sirianni when a when a coach. Do you tell me if this is the face of this is the same guy who was mugging for the cameras and had all kinds of swagger. Now listen to him. Here's Sirianni at the presser. You tell me if they're going to win this week. What do you see now? Losing five or six that keeps that belief. Yeah, I mean, none of us are quitters. We all get up off the mat when we're down, and we get up and we keep going. Like I don't like when you're when you get hit in life, when you get hit in football, you got two options: you can stay down, or you can get you can get the f up. And I know this group is fighters. I know this group will get up. I know that we've all been through things in our life that is that's that we've had all had to deal with shit, and we know how to get up. And that's why we're all sitting in this room. The same message that I talked to the guys about last year, um, you know, going into the NFC championship game about, you know, not only are we physically tough, we're mentally tough and thinking about all the stuff that you've been through in your life um, and why you're in this seat right now. You know, there's the same message I would say right now uh, when you're going, not only when you're, when you're, won 15 games like we did that last year at that time but also when you're on a five game five game losing streak because you know and so it again it's nobody's quitting on this team because that's the reason all these guys are in that locker room because they know how to freaking fight the coaches know how to freaking fight the players know how to freaking fight the staff the staff know how to freaking fight and so we'll just get up and we'll fight again and we'll see you know see what happens next week when we put everything we got into it and and we've been putting everything we got into it but we're gonna put everything we got up into it this week and we'll see what happens i mean what's he supposed to say uh, they're going home, man. They're yeah. going home. When you start, when you start dropping f bombs at, at the presser as the coach, it, you know, you know, you're going down. They were ten and one. They're one and five since they got beat by the Giants, ruined by the Giants. They get beat by the Cardinals. AJ Brown is not going to be healthy for this game against Tampa. Hurts his finger. Hurts his finger is is screwed up. Uh, you know, Philly. Philly is just. I don't know. I mean, last year they had 70 sacks. This year, 43. So totally different team from a year ago. Uh, I love that the most smug guy in football is getting his comeuppance right here because this guy is so smug. And the Niners beat them and sent them into a freaking tailspin. And it's just been awesome to watch. So I hope they circle the freaking drain. I like uh, I like Tampa to win that game. Uh, Eagles are two and a half point favorites as the five seed on the road, but I'll take Tampa. Nobody likes Tampa. Nobody talks about Tampa, but Tampa doesn't have 
psychological problems. The Eagles are a broken team right now. They're not going in there without A.J. Brown and with a hurt hurts and having just, I mean, it's like, do you think that the one in five is a mirage or do you think that they've been trying and failing? I think they've been trying and failing. I think they'll try again this week and fail again this week. I'll take Tampa. Would you, how about that? Who would you fear more coming into Levi's stadium? The Bucks or Eagles? Well, I don't, I mean, I, I have respect for what the Eagles, you know, the, the Eagle group that got to 10 and one, but I mean, they have no idea what they're doing right now. They're, they're lost defensively. Sean Desai was a circus. They replaced him with Matt Patricia. It hasn't been any better. You know, I don't know if you follow Emmanuel Acho, but Acho did a film breakdown of one of the Giants' touchdowns, and they're like, who's covering this guy? I mean, they just, they had a busted play. When you're, I mean, it's one thing to have busted plays in the preseason, bad run fits against, you know, the Raiders or something like that, and they take off for an 80 yard run. When you're having totally broken plays and busted plays in week 17 and 18, you got problems. And Hassan Reddick is a pass rusher. Yesterday, they're dropping him into coverage. I mean, it's like they are lost defensively. They just lost their best weapon. They're going home. So the 49ers are awaiting whoever reveals themselves to be the lowest remaining seed in the NFC. That's who their opponent is going to be. Larry, are you... You, you you picking a path here? Who do you think comes to Levi Stadium as the lowest advancing seed? Tampa. Yeah, I think Tampa is going to be here. Um, and I think uh, the Niners will handle Tampa. I think as much as I think the Rams can beat the Lions, <clears throat> I don't know. I, something tells me the Lions will have enough to get over there. I think Green Bay has a shot to knack, knock off Dallas, but um, I think Dallas ultimately will win that game. So I think Tampa, I think Tampa is going to be the team that comes to the Niners.